We're looking at a new series this morning on the interpretation of dreams. So let's look at the book of Job chapter 33. Statement made by Elihu. If you remember, there were three friends who came and then the fourth was mentioned later in the book of Job. And towards the end of the book of Job, God rebuked the first three friends but not the fourth. Implying that the fourth and some of the statements made by the fourth are prophetic and they are in line with him. In Job chapter 33, is a statement made by Elihu which carries a lot of truth. Verse 34 right up to verse 38. For God may speak in one way or in another, yet man does not perceive. In a dream, in a vision of the night, when sleep, when deep sleep shall fall, when deep sleep fall upon men, while slumbering on their beds, then he opens the ears of men and seals their instructions in order to turn men from his deed and conceal pride from men. He kills back his soul from the pit and his life from perishing by the sword. Now we have... Um, taught on dreams in a general sense as part of the series on how to be led by the Spirit and we are going further than that. But just to outline in case those of you were not here, we mentioned that uh, dreams are also referred to as a vision of the night or visions of the night as you can see here that uh, dreams and visions of the night are dual phrases that refer to the same thing. A dream to the Hebrew mind is a vision of the night. It's a vision that you see in your, uh, when you're in your subconscious state. Besides that, we mention how that there are three uh, types of dreams and vision. If you remember, there is the direct uh, or clear dream or vision that does not need any interpretation. It means what it is. Uh, for example we find that Joseph, the husband of Mary, who was ex uh, carrying Jesus in a womb, being directed by an angel in a dream. So angels do appear directly in people's dream. Just as if you see an open vision, so in a dream, you could see an angel too, who gives instructions. And he was led by the angel to go into Egypt and then come back to... Uh, Israel and then go to uh, Nazareth, uh, he was led by the angel. So there is a clear cut or direct dream or vision. And then we have the second category that we call the message type. And uh, where you could have a whole series of uh, visions or dreams, but there's only one main message. And we have illustrated with Acts 16, Paul, in a me uh, before his Macedonian journey, he was at Troas waiting after he was told by the Spirit not to go to Bithynia or Mysia. He waited at Troas and then uh, he had a, a night, a night vision. And if you take the Hebrew meaning, he possibly had a dream or a vision, whichever. But to them it was the same. A dream and a vision are similar and can be, be regarded as one. And although he saw the Macedonian man, he took it as a message and not as a parable. When he went to Philippi, which was the capital of Macedonia, Paul did not look for a man, although he saw a man in a vision. The first people he encountered were women. There was Lydia, etc. and they were gathering at the seaside and he started his ministry there. Uh, and so we know that uh, that was a kind of message, message dream or vision. And then the third category is a parable where each dream, uh, each picture 
in a vision or dream has a symbolic meaning. Like Daniel, he has uh, dreams and visions in the night. And he saw these animals that came. And each animal represents a nation. So these are symbolic visions or dreams. And we have left it at that. We have also mentioned uh, how Daniel and Joseph got into interpretation of dreams. Some of the requirements that were given. And we have given some rules and guidelines on how to interpret dreams in a general sense. We mentioned how that uh, every in a parable kind of vision or dream, every symbol has to be scriptural. In other words, if a snake in the Bible represents something evil, then whatever type of snake you saw in a dream or vision, it still symbolizes evil. Even if the snake is white in color, it still is evil, except it's deception. And if the snake is rainbow color and comes to you and say, Oh, you are wonderful. That snake still represents evil. right? It, the symbols have to be scriptural. So that is what we call the underlying guideline. But we have to go p- further than that. For as uh, I meditate over dreams and uh, visions, I realize that there is a whole part in the leading of the spirit through dreams. And apparently from this scripture that we have just read in Job 33, that a dream plays a significant part in the life of every one of us. Even if you sit right here this morning and you say, I didn't have any dreams uh, last night or the night before or the last week or the last month. In fact, I don't have any dreams. There is no such thing. Every one of us dream, but we do not remember our dreams. According to the biological analysis of a person's sleep, you go to different stage. And uh, there's a stage of sleep where your eyes do not move. And uh, according to their study today, they recognize that the first stage of sleep is for your body. And uh, your body is having a rest. And so... Uh, There is no dream. There is no dream state. Your eyes do not move. But there is a stage of dream of sleep which they call the REM sleep. Which stands for rapid eye movement. And uh, the eyes move. The next time you are not sure, then observe somebody sleeping. (laughs) And you could see whether at which state they are in. Why do the eyes move? For in a dream, it is as if you're watching a movie. And the eyes move and respond as if you're watching a big screen movie. Accordingly. And, uh, but it's an internal movie. It's something that only you see. And REM sleep, uh, to those who study sleep, scientists who study sleep, they, they think that it has something to do with the mind. That there is a necessity for the mind to analyze whatever the thing it was. The activities of the day, rearrange information, process the information that has been received thus far uh, throughout the day. They have tested people and uh, whenever a person goes to sleep, they have a test group. Whenever REM sleep starts, they wake the person up. In other words, all they allow is a person's uh, sleep without REM, without rapid eye movement, which is a dream state. And they found that a person's, uh, even though they had some sleep, but no REM sleep, that a person's soul and mental uh, faculty is affected. A person's ability to concentrate, the person's ability to focus their mind becomes affected when a person is deprived of dreaming. Interesting study. But of course they left it hanging. They cannot conclude for they didn't have a foundation to build on. They could only see things from the natural point of view. As we analyze these things from the Bible perspective, REM sleep or rapid eye movement sleep is a dream state And it's at that stage that the Bible says in Job 33, God places His instructions. God places things that would lead us, guide us, 
we have actually a large portion of the leading of the spirit, quote unquote, in our dream life. But just as in the conscious state, so it is in a subconscious state. That is when we when we are in our conscious state, about ninety or ninety five percent of the leading we receive in our life is through the human spirit. It's the human spirit that instructs us that tells us things that are right or wrong, the inward witness and the inward voice. Then the other 5% or 10% is what we call the spectacular leadings, like visions, audible voice, prophecy, and all the others, they come. But the main primary leading in our life is the inward spirit, the human spirit, which is the inward witness and the inward voice that we hear. As I analyze these areas here, I realize that 90, 90 or 95% of our dream life, the direction we receive is from our human spirit. Deep in the corridors of our spirit, there are instructions that are given to us. Then there are some dreams that are from God that we realize. Dreams can come from three sources just as thoughts can come from three sources. It can come from God, it can come from demonic activities, or it can come from ourselves. And uh, our thoughts can also come from three realms. It can come from God, it can come from ourselves, and it can come from the enemy. And as we walk with God, we realize that uh, most of our thoughts will either be from God or from within us. Our spirit searches within us. And uh, in the dream stage, there seems to be more protection if we walk with God and we are covered by the blood, we uh, do not have any unconfessed sin in our life, there is no open door for the enemy to come and affect our dream life. That leaves two categories. From God or from our human spirit or from within us. Within us. And about 5% or 10% maybe from God. Once in a while you have a dream that really is a message direct from God. What do we mean from God and from our human spirit? Why do we make a differentiation? If you understand how to be led by the Spirit, we mentioned that when it is God who says something, you have a thus says the Lord. But when you have our human spirit instructing us, you have what Paul says, I perceive in my spirit. There is a world of a difference. When we say, I perceive, we are saying we have only one small part. And it is changeable. And uh, the instructions may need more uh, verification and clarification. Whereas when you have a dust says the Lord, there is nothing more you can change. There is nothing more you can add. There is nothing except to obey. In a similar way, in dreams, there are certain dreams that have a clear cut, thus says the Lord. There's nothing else you can do about it except pray to God that He will tell you, reveal to you fully what, what He is instructing you. There are certain dreams that you notice are authoritative. They carry a direct message from God, like Pharaoh's dream in the Old Testament. He had a clear cut dream that was for his whole nation. If he did not understand that dream and interpret it, his whole nation may perish. That, those are important dreams. Those are direct messages from God. The dreams that were recorded of uh, Joseph, two dreams that he had were direct messages from God. And uh, he has called a dreamer of dreams. He may have other dreams too. But there were only two recorded because those two constituted messages from God. But this type of dreams only occur in about 5 to 10 percent. The vast majority of our dreams come from the realm of our human spirit or our human soul. They are interlinked together. And they constitute direction in our life. The human spirit can lead us as much as the Holy Spirit. And we are to train our human spirit in the Word of God so that we could trust our human, we could be sensitive to the human spirit and, and do those things according to what God wants. Say, so why does God do it that way? God doesn't want us to be robots. Where we always go by, that says a lot, turn right. That says a lot, turn left. That says a lot, take your coffee now. Then that says a lot, it's not for you. <laughs> right? So, you know, we are not robots. 
So God leads us by the human spirit and when He does it through the human spirit, it demands that we grow. And when we are led by human spirit and human spirit is trained in Him, not only are we obedient to God, we have become like God. Because our human spirit has taken a nature and a maturity of God. So as we look at this area of uh, dreams, the most common dreams, that we will constitute about 90% of a person's life, 90 to 95% of a person's life, is of all your dreams, that God is giving instructions indirectly and your human spirit is picking things up. If that is a vast amount of our dreams, then we need to understand them. There's a reason for this series here. That we could go further and understand on the interpretation of dreams. We need one more passage here in Ecclesiastes chapter 5 verse 3. Ecclesiastes chapter 5 verse 3. And remember that all the other things that we have taught are foundational. And uh, you should have some background of those. Ecclesiastes chapter 5 verse 3 Because there will be some things we cover that You are wondering how does it fit in here and there They do not contradict what is taught But they are just specifics um, Here is a statement made by King Solomon it says here For a dream comes through much activity the fool's voice is known by his many words. We'll take that first part that is applicable to dreams. According to his understanding, a dream comes through much activity. And we realize that King Solomon is one of the wisest men during his times. And he will have a clearer understanding of this realm too. He understands biology, he understands zoology, and he wrote thousands of proverbs. And he has some understanding of this area here about dreams. When he says the dream comes through much activity, he's indirectly saying that the activities of our life would be related to the dreams that we have. And we're going to illustrate that. Because we are looking at how to interpret dreams And when we talk about how to interpret dreams We are not just talking about the, uh, the 5% that is directly from God But we are talking about all general dreams The other 90% That constitute a major portion of our dream life A dream is contextual In other words, although they are fixed symbol, symbols in a dream like a snake represents evil sheep represents something good goat represents something religious and an imitation there are fixed symbols in the Bible that are immutable, unchangeable but besides that there are other symbols that are changeable that can represent something in a person's life and another thing in another person's life. That is why the interpretation of dreams is not as easy as you, as you look at it from the outside. It's not as simple as that. And the reason why we taught, teach on this area is because I sense that in the secular world there will be a gathering interest in this kind of occultic things. And there are several worldly books on that. Rhea Digest has a little mini booklet on that, on dreams. The Buddhist Taoist people have a little book on that. And uh, Carl Jung, the psychologist based in Europe, has uh, some things to say about dreams. And uh, some Christians have written a book uh, like uh, uh, Mark Wiggler uh, uses one of those books on dreams uh, uh, in one of his courses. Not by him, but by another author. And... Uh, I have read through and have a glance and look at them carefully and I found that uh, except for the Christian one which has a higher accuracy, the others are completely inaccurate. 
and uh, like the one brought up by the real digest and the one by uh, the secular artists or occultic uh, the symbols they have and they say this is how they put the book they say uh, interpretation of dreams and actually it's a dictionary of dreams what they have is they say this symbol represents that and a house represents this and a tree represents this and uh, it's fixed and they say when you have a dream refer to that dictionary okay tree and then you look what tree means and this it's too rigid and uh, it's it's so easy to misinterpret a dream if you use those books in case anyone you come across them or have a look at them seeking to interpret a dream oh lord make me like daniel but you went to the worldly books instead of to the bible and uh, so that is the weakness in these uh, books they have fixed the symbols and uh, some of their interpretation that I wanted to see what they interpret as like snake they interpret something good and uh, some other symbols scorpions or uh, sinful acts I, I look at them and they say you know these are nothing nothing wrong so obviously, they don't have a, a ruler to measure what is good and evil. So for them, everything looks quite okay. Now we have a rule book called the Bible that classifies major symbols. You cannot change them. They will re remain as it is in the Bible. A serpent represents evil, etc. But outside, there are other areas that need interpretation where a house what does a house represent in the bible see it's quite neutral a house represents a dwelling place it can be a dwelling place for good or for evil things like that where where the bible has no direct specifics of good and evil a house just represents a dwelling place and so because of that the interpretation of dreams is not as simple as that and then i've read that uh the author who of the book dreams uh, dreams and visions dreams and his interpretation mm, and I uh, forgot the author's name there's one of the books that are used by Mark Wiggler in his cause and communion with God it's about three four books that he used along with that and uh, met him and gave me a whole series of his books and one of them was his dreams and I read through carefully now this author is a pastor and uh, he shared several dreams that has led his life. He has gone at a certain stage in his ministry to the school by Carl Jung, who has died, and his followers has taken over that. And he has come up with some conclusions, but I have reservations on some areas. Almost all of the dreams that he has are in the category of uh, personal interpretation in other words he only referred to himself he completely excluded the 5% and the 10% for him he stretched the 90% to the 100% for us we classify there are certain things 90% there are certain things 5 and 10% what do we mean? Like in that book, uh, uh, if he dreams about his mother or his father, uh, it means something about his soul, his soul qualities from his father, his soul qualities for his mother. Or if he dreams about animals, a porcupine, a squirrel, a horse, a pig, and all these things, they represent in that book different emotions. See, just to show you how they interpret it. In a sense, it has some truth, but it's not absolute. That's a problem. So he will put, for example, if he dream of a squirrel, and that squirrel represents this emotion. Perhaps it's the emotion of affection. And uh, it's not that, but just an illustration. 
or if he dreams of uh, a tiger, then that represents his uh, his boldness, the emotion of uh, his fearlessness, and so all the animals represent different emotions in his soul. Basically, about uh, 99.9 percent of his interpretation all has to do with his soul and soul development, which has a truth in it, but not always. And he interprets death as meaning different things also. And as I read that book, at a certain point, I, I could discern that demonic powers came in because he opened himself to that kind of interpretation where everything was good, good, you know, everything has to do with the soul. And I could see that there are some representation there that represent demonic powers that try to come into his life that he is not uh, shutting off from. Instead of just interpret as an emotion. For example, if you dream uh, of, uh, of going to the jungle, in the jungle, you met some wild pigs and wild, uh, wild animals and tigers. And if you read that book and interpret solely by that book, it would mean that the jungle represents the jungle of your emotion. And that wild pig represents you know, a part of your nature to be wild, <laughs> perhaps. And then the tiger uh, represents uh, a part of you that uh, perhaps is that, that bold part and uh, you're learning how to uh, balance all your emotions that will be it or you could also interpret it differently where for example uh, 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 wild pigs and tigers could, could represent demonic powers and they could represent uh, you're going into a, a, a certain stage where they are lurking in the dark. Perhaps you're entering a stage in your life where it's the unknown. The jungle means something unknown. And uh, then uh, hiding in the unknown are all these demonic powers in different forms. A pig to me could symbolize uh, uncleanness. And uh, temptations in the last area. Tiger could represent... Uh, things that uh, try to put fear into your life. So you could see that the same dream, if you have a different perspective, can be interpreted two ways. You could interpret 100% as from the soul and have to do with your soul, or you can interpret it as 100% have to do with some spiritual message. You could see how interpretation is not as easy as it seems, even though you un understand the symbols. And that's why we want to teach a little bit in detail on the interpretation of dreams, because as I pray, I, I, I realize that a lot of the leadings in our life that we tend to miss in our conscious life, they are repeated in our dreams. And if we will pay attention to some of the messages that are coming in our dreams, we will not go astray out of God's perfect will. There are warnings, as mentioned there, God places dreams in our life to direct our lives, to keep us from the path leading to the pit. The wrong ways. It could lead us in the right things, and the right ways. As we analyze all these things, I encourage you in this series, that record your dreams from tonight, till the next week, and throughout this series, even some of the most insignificant one, please, we, we want a practical session, alright? Take this as a seminar. Record them down, buy a little notebook, entitle it, My Dreams. <laughs> Even if those dreams sound crazy and uh, seem in insignificant, uh, don't just uh, ignore them, write them down. And when you record, one of the most important things for interpretation is details. Details. Details that you would otherwise miss. But don't forget them. Write them down. And don't wait until it's too late. When you wake up, write them down. And uh, submit it next week. <laughs> right? And uh, at least uh, have some samples so that we could do it. And I could promise you this thing that if it's anything embarrassing, I'll deal privately with you. <laughs> Uh, anything helpful, then we'll do publicly, right? So we, that is always the way we minister. And anything personal that I sense that your dream is referring to, then we'll have a personal time. But uh, anything that is good that can help everybody, 
and uh, positive then we will bring it out for illustration and so uh, record them down because they will be important to leading in your life you'll be surprised that many of your dreams tells you about your job tells you about your career tells you about your business decisions tells you about your ministry a lot of things are missed. And as I pray in this area, that's why the Holy Spirit impressed me to teach on this series. He's saying, my people are missing what I'm telling them. They're missing what I'm telling them in their dream life. Because they regard it the way we regard it in our, in our westernized uh, educational system. Just for some background, the world's philosophy today and humanism is greatly affected by Aristotle. Before Aristotle was Plato. These two Greek scholars and philosophers that affected the whole world, our whole educational system. Plato taught that you could receive knowledge through three areas. Through the physical world, through the intellect and through what he would call divine activity. To us, we understand it to be spirit realm. But when Aristotle came, he only accepted that knowledge can come through the senses and through the intellect. And today, the world system and education is based on the fact that knowledge can come through sense knowledge and the intellect. They ignore completely the spirit realm. And that is why the average educated person regards dreams as something wishy-washy, airy-fairy. There is nothing significant. They completely ignore the aspect of the spiritual which is unknown as far as the intellectual man is concerned or non-existent. So as we look into the interpretation of dreams in the detail, how do we interpret and what the basis we have the Bible that tells us symbols? What about things that are more detailed? So there are certain rules that we're going to look at. Let's look at the book of Genesis. Number one, we look at some basic rules first as we start off this series. That a dream is contextual. Before you can actually interpret somebody's dream, it's easier to interpret your dreams in some ways, but sometimes harder. Let me explain it. Before we can interpret somebody's dreams, I must understand what those symbols mean to him. There are certain quote unquote that we call international symbols. Snake represent evil, right? And etc. They are easy to interpret. But there are others that are not directly covered here. So to interpret a person's dream, I will need to understand what the symbol means to him. If to that person the animal squirrel has some significance right then besides the bible interpretation i will also need some more details to interpret his dream and find out what squirrel means to him perhaps when he was small and he has a squirrel as a pet and something that was so meaningful that was taken away and he cried and cried <laughs> then it has some different meaning besides the general meaning that is an unclean animal or just one of God's creation. It, it takes on an extra meaning for him in his dream. Let's take two persons. Let's say for Barnabas, that's the squirrel. No, today they have little pet squirrels that people keep as pets and uh, small, uh, less than the size of the palm of your hand. And let's say he, he, he loves squirrels. Let's take something more common, right? Cats. Let's say he loved cat, and he has a cat that he kept all the days of his life when he was a young little boy. What does this cat mean everything to him? 
and uh, at a certain stage he, he may have lost the cat and uh, so the cat represents for him um, something of love where perhaps he was presented with a cat when he was small it represents companionship and it co- represents security and uh, affection so now when he dreams of cat I may have the general interpretation that a cat is an unclean animal but that doesn't help me in some of the details and I will need some details of what cats represent to him I need to know a person's life to help to interpret that then for example a cat to him could represent things that are witchcraft perhaps his only experience of cat was to do with witchcraft then when he dreams of a cat and he dreams of a cat two different interpretations for the same cat cats to him mean something nice cats to him mean something evil so my interpretation of their dreams when they shared with me would have to I have to pick up what that person's understanding is so you can see why it's sometimes easier to interpret somebody else's dreams than uh, somebody else's dreams whom you know than somebody else whom you do not know because of things like that if you take that statement by itself then in a sense it's true but in another sense it's not true because our dreams sometimes reveal our blind spots and because we cannot see that and the dreams try to tell us about our blind spots we find it difficult to interpret it so there's the other counterbalance here with all this in mind we're looking at the book of Genesis chapter 40 the baker and the butler a dream is number one contextual we want to give scriptures for all these things in uh, verse 9 it says then the chief butler told his dream to Joseph and said to him behold in my dream a vine was before me and in the vine were three branches it was as though a a budded its blossoms shot forth and its clusters brought forth ripe grapes then Pharaoh's cup was in my hand and I took the grapes and pressed them into Pharaoh's cup and placed the cup in Pharaoh's hand in order to interpret the butler's dream we need to know what those symbols mean to the butler so Joseph has to have wisdom that's why in the Bible the great interpreters of dreams are those who are wise Joseph who had God's wisdom Daniel who has God's wisdom because when you are wise you understand another person's life besides your own so Joseph must understand what those symbols mean what does a vine mean to the butler a vine can mean different things to different people if you take the word vine generally it means something good the word vine also represents in the Bible the church because it's not talking anything about the church here in the butler's dream it's nothing completely to do with the church because it's not even a believer to the butler the word the word vine the vine vine tree produces grapes and grapes and uh, the dream that he was having was him taking the cup and taking the grapes and squeezing the grape juice and giving it to Pharaoh remember this it was something he used to do when he worked all the time when he was serving Pharaoh that was what he was doing he always took grapes and squeezed it according to the customs of those days and gave it to Pharaoh 
It would have been like one of you if you have been you have been uh, you're an accountant and in your dream you dream about yourself doing accounts. Do you know what that means? That dream is talking about your job. Can you see the correlation now? You don't need to dream about vine in order to refer to your job because the vine has nothing to do with you. You may not even know what a vine tree looks like. A vine branch. So the symbols are contextual. Because Joseph understood that that is what he normally did, the dream has to do with his job. His work. And there were three, and the word three, and the number three was important. That is why don't forget details. He wrote, he mentioned there were three branches. So that tree was significant, for it tells about three days. And for the baker, he had a different dream. And it says here in uh, verse 16, When the chief baker saw that the interpretation was good, he said to Joseph, I also was in my dream. And there I had three white baskets on my head. In the uppermost basket there were all kinds of baked goods for Pharaoh and the birds ate them out of the basket in my head. So Joseph answered and said this is the interpretation of it. Three baskets are three days. Within three days Pharaoh will lift off your head from you and bring you on a tree and the birds will eat your flesh from you. Now if you study carefully it's a very very different interpretation from the normal dream. Very different. So we have to look at the context again of the baker. To the baker, he dreams about bread. To the butler, he dreams about grapes. To the accountant, they dream about accounts. To the engineer, they dream about engineering projects. To the minister, they dream about preaching. You know what it means when you dream about preaching? Your ministry, your call, something inside. It may not be exactly that you may go to that place that you dream about. But it has reference to your call and your ministry, your job. In other words, your job. So dream is contextual. We need to understand the context. Besides that, we just add another point, that the context is limited by your work. It's very unlikely if you have uh, your your work is on the national basis for your dream to have an international basis. If your if your work has to do only with a local context, a district level, it's very unlikely that your dream has to do with international things. In other words, it's contextual to the size of your job or your ministry. For Pharaoh, he was governing over a whole land, a nation. So he dreams about things that have national perspective. It was not just a personal soul dream to do with his life. It, it took on a national perspective. For Daniel, who had an international perspective, Daniel's dream was international. In one dream, he has four nations. <laughs> Think about that. Because he was functioning in an international perspective. He, he was a key leader and minister over two, three nations. He lived across them. So his dreams took on an international perspective. So to interpret a dream, we also need to understand a, not only a person, what those symbols mean to a person, but the level that the person is functioning in. If a person's call, for example, to the ministry 
is a soul winner. A person is not called directly to the ministry, but a soul winner, perhaps in a city. It's very unlikely that their dreams would have significance in an international perspective. That is why we got a lot of misinterpretation. A soul winner who has a certain dream, misinterpreting it to be an international thing that will happen to the body of Christ. It's very unlikely. A dream will always be contextual. I heard people who who have not uh, who are not called to the to the ministry and they and they interpret their dreams in terms of what will happen in the ministry of God is unlikely. Very unlikely. Right? A dream is contextual. And uh, so I have people who are, for example, soul winners who have certain dreams. And in their dream, it looks like it has an international flavor. And they interpret it as a worldwide thing that's going to happen. When I hear it, not only judging it by dreams, but judging it from what I'm hearing from the Spirit, I know they're hearing the wrong thing. Or rather, they are, they are picking up in a wrong interpretation with the right dream. You could have the right vision, wrong interpretation, wrong application. You could have correct dream, right dream, but wrong interpretation, so wrong understanding. So it's contextual to a person's life. Now to the baker here, bread and carrying bread is something that he does all the time. How did Joseph refer it to death? It looks like he is just losing his job. Three baskets and the birds eating it. Because Joseph was in charge of the prison. And he knew what happens when a death sentence is pronounced. There were many others before the baker who were sentenced to death where he must have seen them hanging on a tree and the birds pecking on the flesh. That was the concept of death in those days and a judgment. So based on that, he understood that birds pecking equals death. Today, birds pecking may not equal death. But in those days, when a prisoner is sentenced and condemned to death, those are one of the things that they will do. Pharaoh didn't do it just because the bake, it was a baker. The common criminal who was sentenced to death will be hanged. Something common that they see, perhaps every month, happening in Egypt. So with that understanding of what that symbol means in those days, he understood that there was a picture of death. A dream is contextual. The second difficulty to interpret a dream that we need to understand is symbols in a dream can change even within one person. Don't talk about different person. We see in the first point that a symbol to A and a symbol to B, same, same symbol means two different things. Right? It's contextual. But the other difficulty that comes in is even within one person, the same symbol can change. In other words, if it was... Uh, this symbol that represents something at a certain point of time, at another point of time, the same symbol represents something else. The same symbol changed with time, not only with persons. Let's look at Pharaoh here. Uh, let's look at Nebuchadnezzar, right? Go on to Nebuchadnezzar in the book of Daniel. In chapter 1. The dream that Nebuchadnezzar forgot. Verse 31 and 32. Daniel chapter 2. Daniel chapter 2. says, You, O king, were watching, and behold a great image. 
This great image whose splendor was excellent stood before you and its form was awesome. The image head was of fine gold, its chest and arms of silver, its belly and thighs of bronze. Now verse 36, 37. Now we will tell the interpretation of it before the king. You, O king, are king of kings. He says, For the God of heaven has given you a kingdom, power, strength, and glory. Wherever the children of men dwell, or the beasts of the field, and the birds of the heaven, He has given them into your hand, and has made you ruler over them all. Then He says, you are the head of gold. So in the first dream that Nebuchadnezzar had, the head of gold represent himself. Right? Second dream that he had in chapter 4 was 10. These were the visions of my head. While on my bed I was looking and behold, a tree in the midst of the earth, and its height was great. The tree grew and became strong. Its height reached to the heavens, and it could be seen to the ends of all the earth. Its leaves were lovely, its fruit abundant, and in it was food for all. The beasts of the field found shade under it. The birds of the heavens dwell in its branches. And all flesh was fed from it. I saw in the visions of my head while in my bed. And there was a watcher, a holy one coming down from heaven. He cried aloud and said, Chop down the tree and cut off its branches. And it says in verse, fifth, uh, verse 15, leave the stump. And here is the interpretation in verse 19. When Daniel, whose name was Bel Belteshazzar, was astonished for a time, and his thoughts troubled him. That means Daniel instantly understood what the dream meant. Remarkable. He instantly understood what the dream meant. The moment he heard it, he was filled with shock because he knew what it meant. And he says in uh, <clears throat> verse 22, It is you, O king, who have grown and become strong. In other words, the tree represents Nebuchadnezzar. If you analyze it in this second point, Nebuchadnezzar had two dreams. In the first dream, the head of gold represent himself. In the second dream, the tree represent himself. Two different symbols to refer to the same man. It is possible, that's number two, that in a sequence of dreams, or in different dreams at different times, you have different symbols that represent the same thing. Of course, you all recall Pharaoh's dream. The seven thin cows and the seven fat cows. The seven sheaves of grain and the seven lean sheaves of grain. Two different symbols represent the same thing. Even in one dream. That's remarkable. In two different dreams, two different symbols represent the same thing. In the same dream, two symbols represent the same thing. 
That's why interpretation of dreams is not as easy as we see it. But if you understand these points, it can make it easy. That you could have a dream last night. And in your dreams, if everyone had dreamed here before, and you remember your dreams, you know how dreams change and have different parts. You could be in a certain place in your dream and zoom, suddenly you were at a different place. Usually, it means that it is the same thing in different symbols. Right? Same thing in different symbols. For example, in Pharaoh's dream that we read about in the Bible. Pharaoh dreamed about, about the seven fat cows, the seventeen cows, seven fat uh, uh, sheaves of, of grain and seventeen ones. Two different symbols, two different parts of the dream. In fact, he woke up and he slept again. Two different dreams but very closely tied. It is the same thing referred to. So that helps us in interpreting dreams. And next time you have a dream which has two, three parts. Dreams have different parts. Scene 1, scene 2, scene 3, scene 4. Some people interesting, scene 1000. <laughs> right? Real dreamers. All those scenes can represent one message given in different forms. Though you are there watching the dream, that dream itself can represent you. Doesn't mean it represents somebody else necessarily. Even the Nebuchadnezzar was there and he was looking at the tree. He says here he was looking at the tree itself. He was right there, separate from the tree in his dream. The tree was a tree, he was himself. He was a separate person in the dream from the tree. But that tree was him. It was not even referring to the empire. If he had told that to another person instead of Daniel, perhaps the other person would say, uh, we'll talk about his empire. But if you look very carefully, he didn't lose his empire. It was him who was judged. His empire continued to exist, possibly because Daniel held it together. During those years when he was cast out as a beast, who took control of his empire? I mean, in the natural sense, the whole thing would have collapsed. But if you look at it carefully, the empire didn't collapse, it was Nebu who collapsed. But as I study the dream very carefully, it would have been easy to just interpret the dream to represent the collapse of his empire. But it was not. It was a personal dream. Even in the other dream, and that is different, the one where he was the golden head. Now that represents both him and his empire. Even though he was standing there and the statue was separate from him. So remember when you have a dream, it does not mean that it always you have to represent you. In the dream that you have, you could be there and you could be watching something that represents you. Interesting, isn't it? Interpretation of dreams. It could be a tree, it could be a person even. Who was not you, but you. And in the dream, it was like another person, but in the end, it was like you. It was you. In a dream, you could have, you could have a, a dream about chair. Uh, about some, somebody who looks like you, but not you. Then it's you. <laughs> or some experience. There was somebody else going through, and you're watching. Perhaps in your dream, you see a little kid experiencing all kinds of things. You cannot recognize the kid. It looks like someone familiar, but not familiar. Someone recognizable, but not recognizable. And the kid goes through all those things. Perhaps, you know, go through painful experience, fire and uh, loss, etc. You wake up wondering what it means. You're wondering whether God is telling you about somebody else's kids. No, most probably God is talking about yourself. That small little kid represents you. You were a small kid. And whatever you were going through symbolized what you're going through. So we realize here, like 
In the second point here, symbols change, but the meanings are the same. Two different dreams, two different symbols, same person. Same dream, different scene, different symbols, same thing. Same person, same uh, message. In the third category, as we look and study the interpretation dream, we are just introducing basic uh, principles before we apply thoroughly in the interpretation of dreams. Is when as we look at uh, dreams, like for example, let's look at the book of uh, Genesis and uh, chapter 37. Joseph's dream, Genesis 37, verse 33. Now Israel loved Joseph more than all his children because he was a son of his old age. Also he made him a tunic of many colors. But when his brothers saw that their father loved him more than all his brothers, they hated him and could, and could not speak peaceably to him. Now Joseph dream a dream and he told it to his brothers and they hated him even more so he said please hear this dream which I have dreamt there we were binding sheaves in a field and behold my sheaf arose and stood upright and indeed your sheaves stood all around and bowed down to my sheaf and make his brothers angry of course now, although he was there and his brother's sheaves were there, the dreams represent him. But the other thing here, it represents his job and his call. In those days, they were agricultural base. It was a common thing for them to go out and cut and harvest, put it together. They may have done that several times. So something from their work and their job was brought into Joseph's dream but an additional thing happened. When they put all the sheaves together, all the other sheaves bowed down to Joseph. It is saying that Joseph's job or vocation or work or call will be higher than his brother's. So he's referring to his call, his work. Not just to his uh, present position. It was a uh, prediction that was to come. His second dream, in verse 9, he dreamed still another dream. Look, I have dreamed another dream. And this time, the sun, the moon, and the eleven stars bowed down to me. When he told it to his father, his father rebuked him. What is this dream that you have dreamt? Shall your mother and I and your brothers indeed come to bow down to the earth before you? Apparently, Jacob understood dream. Do you notice that? Jacob understood. He knew that the sun was him, the mother was the mother, uh, the moon was the mother. Eleven stars were the children. So Jacob understood the dream. And he scolded rebuke Joseph saying what do you mean I'm going to bow down to you so in that dream an inanimate object sun represent papa moon is mama now it's not always that way right it's not always that way but isn't it strange how symbols are that way and as I study dreams and their symbols to seek interpretation for people and also in all of dreams, you must realize that the language of the spirit is symbolic. The language of the spirit world is symbolic. It's just like if I want to convey with my intellect a description to you, I have to use phrases that you understand. We cannot use language that none of us understand to convey something. 
So, for example, a lot of the charismatic debate, like feeling of the spirit, baptism in the spirit, people quarrel because of definition. To them, it could mean the same thing. But they have fought, churches have split because of definition. So when one person stands up and says some things, the other person understood it to mean something else. Quarrel. Misunderstanding. And uh, hurts, grievances have come because somebody says something that they don't mean it, they mean it something in their context. Somebody understood it to be something else because of their background and they quarrel. You see that happens in communication. Now as the spirit world and our human spirit wants to communicate to us, it will take from within our experience symbols that mean something to us in order to convey a message to us in a picture form of all that will be experienced. So the spirit wants to warn you about danger the human spirit that is coming, it will draw from your life things that represent danger to you. But it's difficult for our intellect to interpret because we may not understand that those symbols represent that. Because those same symbols that the spirit draw from, from our experience, may represent something in a natural world, in a natural intellectual world. And when we wake up, we tend to move into that world and look at that from that context rather than from its actual meaning. So that's why it's difficult. And so the third uh, point that we want to bring forth in regard to a dream and its interpretation is its chronological context, its time frame. A dream has a time frame it may no more be applicable after some time. The time frames are important to rea- realize a dream. A time frame in, in what sense? For example, we want to understand what a person is going through at the time that they have a dream. To interpret dream, you must understand not only what the symbols mean to that person, you must also try to pick up what that person is going through. Because what they are going through will have an effect on the dream. So it has this chronological time frame. For example, if you have been going through a time of difficulty, perhaps in your working life, perhaps you just lost a job, and you have been going to job after job after job, I will be interested in what dreams you have because the dreams you have would have to do in the context, chronological context of what you're going through. Now, if you just tell me your dream, and, you, and, and I, if I did not pick up that you have just lost your job, I may interpret the dream differently. But if I have the chronological context of what you're going through, I could interpret the dream better. With accuracy. Because then those dreams may have a message about your job. It may even lead you and tell you the kind of place you should look for a job in. It may even tell you when you will get the job. See, a dream can tell you the time. Joseph says, in three days, butler, you'll be promoted. Told told the baker, in three days, you'll be hanging on a tree. Day. So a dream has its chronological context. In the sense of what a person is going through at that time. And uh, whether a person is happy, sad, fearful, anxious. All these things must be taken into account before you can interpret a dream. So when you see all these rules coming out to interpret dreams, you realize it's not just hearing the dream and say, let me check out the dictionary. See what is symbol. Not good enough your interpretation will be most inaccurate. You have to pick up what, is, what you're going through. You can understand Joseph picking up 
the butler and the baker. Why? They were temporarily in prison. Joseph was among the chief fellows in charge of the prison. In fact, he was there. Whatever was done and the doing of it, he was the one. The chief jailer delegated it to him. So Joseph would know how long they would be there, roughly. And he would know whether it's permanent or temporary. So Joseph knows the context that they are here temporary. Pending a judgment. That is the context. He would have natural knowledge of that. Now that natural knowledge helped him to interpret their dream. See how important natural knowledge of what a person is going through is important. Now that natural knowledge can be given supernaturally. Sometimes people just give you the dream. And you, are, you don't know their context, their chronological context. Point number three. You may have to pick it up from the Spirit. In order to interpret a person's dream. So interpretation can be taught, can be trained. And the reason we're teaching this is so that most of all, not so that you open a shop called, you know, dreams and it's interpretation. Ten dollars per dream. (laughs) Not for you to do that. But most of all, so that you could interpret your own dreams or perhaps your loved ones or people who share with you. And the most important thing why we want to share this is because people are missing the direction they are receiving through the dreams. That covers their blind spot. Tell them about their blind spot. So we want to lay down the ground rules as we interpret dreams and as we train ourselves to interpret dreams. And I'll be interested in your submitting some of your dreams so that, you see, there's nothing more interesting than to see another person's dream interpreted and then fulfilled precisely. And then we could have a special uh, leaning towards that. Now in this third point, let me share a little bit further. Solomon says in Ecclesiastes chapter 5 verse 3, that a dream comes through much activity. The word activity not only refers to physical activity, the physical work that is there. Behind it also, it conveys the meaning of your soul state. Whether you are fearful or anxious and all this, that that comes. So it is important to see when a person has a dream, what kind of chronological context they have and what they are experiencing, etc. Now with that knowledge, then when we apply to ourselves, that means like David, it's important before we sleep to search our hearts. If you sleep in a state of anxiety and fear that has not been removed, or a state of unforgiveness, or a state of anger, let me tell you, those will come out in a dream and it will color the dream. And that prevents an accurate uh, reception from God. Because it's colored by our emotions. It's important to have emotions of love, joy and peace and the presence of God before we sleep in order to receive accurate messages from our dream. Otherwise, all the dreams will reveal is your soul condition and what you need to do to deal with it. I know people who have dreams who sleep in a state of anger and judgmental things and in the dream it come out and, they, and what happens? The dream confirmed confirm their suspicion. They suspect people are doing that, they suspect of this, they suspect of that, and it comes out in the dream. And they confirm, they say, I saw it. It's not confirmation, it's projection. What you believe, what you feel was projected into the dream. It would be the same like negative confession. People keep saying, this is going to happen, this is going to happen, this is going to happen. Later it happened. They said, there I told you, prophecy fulfilled. (laughs) No, it's not prophecy. They just got what they said. The negative realm. So it is a kind of projection that people have through much activity. When you are aware of that and the importance of the dream life, and we realize that we need to uh, search ourselves before we sleep. It is quite similar to the conscious state. 
For example, it's very hard to hear from God when you're anxious, when you're fearful, when something is troubling your mind. It hinders your accuracy from hearing the voice of God, the voice of your human spirit. The best place to hear from God is a place of rest. Love, peace and joy, the kingdom of God. That's the best place to hear from God. If you're filled with anxiety, it's, your thoughts are troubled. And it tends to be uh, magnetized and pulled towards the wrong direction. So what you're receiving is color. That is why it's sometimes difficult to tell things about yourself. For example, if you're, uh, pray, and if you're praying about a job and you really want it very much. In a natural state, when you're awake, you keep hearing, this is God, this is God, this is God. And, and you thought that's God. But because of your strong desires, 95% of your dream is affected by that magnetic pull. So in a natural state, you see fear drawing towards that. In your subconscious state, you see that desire going into that area. Also, it colors, your activity colors your dream. That's what Solomon is saying. In Ecclesiastes 5 verse 3. The activities. And uh, in order for accurate interpretation, we will need what this third point says, to know the chronological or emotional or spiritual context of a person. What they are going through. Sometimes you could even sense it while they are speaking to you, so that helps in interpretation of the dream, of the experience that they have in God. So remember those three points. Next time anyone shares a dream or you just have a dream, you must go through these first. It must be second nature to you. As, as, it, as it is, as you go through this, then you could put yourself in a better position and get the person in a better position to get an accurate interpretation of what that dream means completely. I just feel like just getting some uh, dreams... Um, from people that um, can uh, may help in this uh, application, right? <coughs> Anybody here has a dream just last night? You can remember? Yes? Are you raising your hand? I always have dreams and good things uh, in my life. Uh, I, happen, I know what's going to happen. So she has a dream and of some things that happen, premonition. Okay. Okay. But you don't remember any dreams? I remember I'll be here in this church at the age of 26 or out here. I remember I'll be flying around the world and chances are coming down. And so many things that no one has to It's good. Record down your dreams, alright? Would you record down your dreams? And we just need one dream, right? right? One dream. Anybody here has a dream? Yes. Praise the Lord. I dream that. I didn't get the wake up call at 6 a.m. and Elaine didn't call me and I was late <laughs> for today. <laughs> but I overslept. You dream you were late. I dream it was a. <laughs> I dream I did not get the wake up call at 6 a.m. in the hotel uh -huh. and that Elaine didn't call me and then I overslept two hours. Uh -huh. and I was rushing around trying to get ready. Yeah, but. But that didn't happen, right? No. It was only in your dream. It was only in my dream. Okay. Now she she just dreamed that uh, she didn't get the wake up call, right, in a hotel, and she was late for church by two hours, right? <laughs> now, like so, that dream doesn't tell me much. It only tells me the state in which she slept in, right? Number three, she was very concerned that she doesn't want to be late. And so that came out in a dream. You can see that the third point is affecting her dream life. Right? It tells me more the state she sleeps, slept in. Right? 
she slept, you know, saying, you know, I must remember, I, I must remember. And uh, of course, it tells, you know, several areas, you know, uh, about her life, <laughs> right? Like uh, uh, things that to, to her is important to get ready for the church, right? And she must have done a lot of preparation before she goes to church. So it tells me a lot of other things about her life too, right? A normal person may not have that kind of anxiety. See? Some of you may never have any anxiety about being late because you're late. <laughs> so because of that natural knowledge, that helps me to understand her as a person also. That's why when you share a dream with a person, the another person can understand you better. Now, immediately, just from that simple dream, I know her character. You can see from the chronological context, I know her character. I know the type of person she is. Right? And I know uh, that it's important for her to prepare for church. More than another person. That tells about her zeal. That also, at the same time, talks about spiritual uh, desire for God. Right? She's the type who does not want to miss out on what God is doing. Right? There are a lot of other things. Right? So what we can share, we share. Right? <laughs> Any other dream? I hope I didn't frighten any one of you. Right? <laughs> right? Yes? I was dreaming this last night. And I, keep, I keep dreaming this dream. I, and in the natural, I don't know how to explain I, I keep dreaming about water. And in this dream, I, I was in this water and I, I was swimming around. I was breathing. This all in this water was really happy. I mean, a real good time in the water, the freedom of the water. Then the next big event that I was walking on the water. But in the natural, I don't know how to swim. I don't really go deep in water. And that kept having to get the right. And there has been a, in the natural, a fear. Because I don't know how to swim. Praise God. Now, Joyce Scott here has a dream. <coughs> and she has a dream that, uh, you have that at least twice, is it? At least twice that she is swimming in the waters and she enjoys her swimming in the water. And then she has it again where she was walking on the water. But before we interpret the dream, remember the other context that we mentioned. We have to understand symbols that mean what she is to her. And uh, she's, she, uh, uh, to interpret that, what symbols mean to her? Because swimming and swimming pools are not found in the Bible. <laughs> but there are other things that are found in the Bible like walking on water or walking through water. Right? So we have what I call the general. If you, all you had thought was the last time that we taught on dreams, then your, your only ability to move in is as far as what the Bible says. Now, walking on water and going through water or going in water symbolize spiritual movement. Example, your Bible knowledge is important to have a basis. We all remember Moses crossing the Red Sea, right? That was like dark and uh, uh, dark, uh, darkness and light moving from one Egyptian realm into the promised land. And uh, we also remember Joshua and uh, the Israelites. So when they crossed the Jordan, it was like going from uh, uh, one aspect into something new, all that they prepared their life for. So this is the scriptural context. Then we have other areas which are important to interpret the dream. Because she is in the ministry. Right? That will affect the interpretation. We know she is in the ministry. We know she has been some time in the ministry. Then other chronological aspects are important in her context. She does not know how to swim in the natural. And that plays an important role in interpreting the dream. So it, it is... Is talking, and God specially used something that she cannot do in the natural, and the Spirit used something that she cannot do in the natural to show her something that she is doing in her dream. That's powerful. That, that means that that dream is as great a significance. Generally, when we share that, most of you will have a general interpretation already. Right? General interpretation would mean that she has a 
uh, is talking about some aspect of ministry that she's going to move into. Obviously. Some, natu- some aspect of the ministry. And uh, something as different as, for example, from uh, uh, crossing the Jordan into the land of Canaan. Something that is vitally important. And uh, then the interpretation is affected also by our own knowledge of, of things like that. Like, for example, I have dreams of flying before and dreams of, uh, of, uh, of, of water before. And uh, so to me, they also, if I, then my experience helps in the interpretation. As I trace it back to my life, it helps because I understood that at certain points in those dreams, they represent crossover points of one phase of ministry to another phase. So that helps to tell, help me to interpret her dream too. That it has reference to the context that she, of her phases in ministry that she's moving in. But here is where all the other details come in very important. Because she does not swim in the natural and yet she has those dreams, it will mean there is something that she has never done before in the spirit. Something she has never done before that is new in the spirit. See, that becomes more specific. General interpretation can help, but specific interpretation helps even more. And because God chose it and somehow the human spirit on the Holy Spirit brought up things that she can never do. That points to things in the spirit that she has never done, moved or experienced before. That God is preparing her for. And it seems to be a prime area. Then twice the dream occurs. One when she was within the water, the other when she was above the water. Now it depends now on when she has a dream, right? Further things, etc. I could find out when and how long ago. So I could find out whether she has actually moved into it. But she has it twice, it means that she will, ex- uh, she will sort of have two different experiences of what God will do in that phase of her ministry. In the first phase, she will be handling those things. In other words, it would to me, because of her context as a pastor, and I know that she's a pastor, she's in ministry. And it tells me that it's going to be some sort of ministry and some that she's going to move into from the time of that dream that she's never done before. And as she moves in, at the first stage, she'll get fully involved with it. Fully involved with it. Now, there are a few details missing in that dream, right? Now, if I could have some details, I could tell exactly what type of ministry it may refer to. And uh, that's why details are important. Now, as far as we have known from that general dream, there is a ministry in her life that she's involved with. But the second dream is important. The second dream means that she's going to delegate whatever she has done there. She's moved into some sort of ministry, and going to establish it. See, when she walks on water, she's no more in it. She's above it. That tells me there's going to be an aspect of ministry that she's going to establish it, then she's going to delegate it, and she's going to be above the whole thing. And it's just going to, quote-unquote, in a ministry, run by itself. So that, those are some details of dreams and interpret. Very important as we see dreams are. Right? So remember, write them down and uh, bring it in the next week. In case you forget, then put it in the box there. We will look into some more details of all these things. Praise God. So let's go to God in prayer. Father, we praise you and we thank you for your grace and your mercy. We ask, so God, that you will lead us by your Spirit. That we do not miss out details, O oh God. Things that you're speaking to us, directing our lives in the natural. You said in your word that you'll give us directions when we are in deep sleep. Directions that will keep us in the right track. Moving in that which you want us to move into. We thank you, Father God, that your grace is abundantly part of our lives. So grant us to be sensitive to the things of your Spirit. Grant us, O God, that we would know your mercy. 
to direct our lives. Thank you, Lord, that you continue to pour your wisdom and understanding upon our hearts. So establish us, O oh God, in your grace. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Let's rise together. And worship our God. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. For the things He has done. With His blood He has saved me. With His fire. God be the glory for the things He has done. Praise God, give Jesus a clap offering. God bless you. Amen.